So in this video, we're going to talk about how to apply absolute value equations to solve real life problems. So we're going to use this four step problem solving process as we work through these examples. So we're going to start off by understanding the problem. So you want to think about what it is that you're trying to solve. So it can be very helpful to underline circle or highlight important information and define any variables. Then we're going to make a plan. So that's going to involve setting up an equation. And then next, we're going to solve the equation. And finally, we want to take a second to reflect and make sure that our solutions are reasonable. So the solutions need to make sense given the context of the problem. So here's our strategy. So problems that involve absolute value equations usually give you like an average value and a range. So if we call the average value C and the range R, you can set up the absolute value equation to model the situation like this. So it'll look like the absolute value of X minus C equals R. So here are our steps. So we're gonna start off by reading the problem carefully, and then we're gonna set up the absolute value equation using the absolute value of X minus C equals R. Then you can solve this equation and check to make sure that your solution makes sense in the context of the problem. So now let's try some examples. A school counselor determines that on average, students attend a college 385 miles away from their hometown. She knows that her estimate could be off by 50 miles. Write and solve an equation she can use to determine the maximum and minimum distances from her student's hometown to college. So you can see here, we have a situation where we have like a central value, right, an average, and then we have a range of values. So we can model this using an absolute value equation. So we have the absolute value of X minus C is equal to R. So now we need to figure out what are the values of C and R. So C is gonna be 385 because that's the average. And then R is gonna be 50 because that's what tells us the range. So when we plug that in, we get the absolute value of X minus 385 is equal to 50. So now to solve this equation, we can uh, separate it into two equations and we get X minus 385 is equal to 50 and X minus 385 is equal to negative 50. So now let's solve these equations for X. So to do that, we're gonna add 385 to both sides. And when we do that, we get X equals 435. So over here, when we add 385 to both sides, we get X equals 335. So now we, from this, we can determine the maximum and minimum values, right? The maximum value is going to be 435 miles and the minimum value is going to be 335 miles. And based on what this is talking about in the problem, 435 miles and 335 miles, is, those are pretty reasonable values. So we know that we solved everything correctly. So now let's try this example. On average, uh, the weight of a bag of chocolate chips is 16 ounces. Only bags within 0.25 ounces of the average weight are shipped to stores. What are the smallest and largest acceptable weights for a bag of chocolate chips? So once again, we have an average value and then a range, right? So we're gonna use the absolute value of X minus C equals R. And so in this case, we have our C equals 16 ounces because that's the average and the range is gonna be 0.25 ounces. So we have the absolute value of X minus 16 equals 0.25. And so now we can separate this into two equations. So we have X minus 16 equals 0.25 and X minus 16 equals negative 0.25. So now let's go ahead and solve for X. So I'm gonna add 16 to both sides. And when I do that, I get X equals 16.25. On the right side, when I add 16 to both sides, I get X equals 15.75. So that means that the smallest value that's acceptable is 15.75 ounces, and the largest acceptable value is 16.25 ounces. So both of these are um, you know, reasonable values for the weight of a bag of chocolate chips. So we know that everything was solved correctly. So now let's try this example. The track team runs laps around the outdoor track every day after school. The average time it takes a member of the team to run one lap is 58.2 seconds. 
The difference between the fastest time and slowest time is 6.4 seconds. Write and solve an absolute value equation to determine the fastest and slowest times. So once again, we have an average value and we have a range, so we're going to use an absolute value equation. So in this case, the average value is equal to 58.2 and the range is given by 6.4 because that's the difference between the fastest and slowest times. So when we plug this into our equation, we get x, the absolute value of x minus 58.2 is equal to 6.4. And now we're going to separate this into two equations so that we can solve. So we get x minus 58.2 equals 6.4 and x minus 58.2 equals negative 6.4. So now we're going to add 58.2 to both sides of this equation to solve for x. So when we do that we get x equals 6.4 plus 58.2, which is 64.6. .6. And then over here, we're going to add 58.2 to both sides. And when we do that, we get x equals negative 6.4 plus 58.2, which is 51.8. So the fastest time for a member of the track team to run a lap is going to be 51.8 seconds and the slowest time is going to be 64.6 seconds. And those are pretty reasonable values, so we know that we solved everything correctly. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this problem on your own. So scientists have determined the best temperature for grilling is within 5 degrees of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So 160 degrees is going to be like our central or average value, and then 5 is going to be our range. So we have the absolute value of x minus 160 is equal to 5. And then when we separate that into two equations, we get x equals 165 and x equals 155. So that gives us a range of values from 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which is our least value, to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is our greatest value. Um, and those are pretty reasonable temperatures for grilling a burger. So you can set up and solve an absolute value equation that represents a real life situation using the absolute value of x minus c equals r, where c represents the central value or average, and r represents the range of possible values.